What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're going to be talking about our top 10 waiver wire pickups as we head into week 12 of the fantasy football season. As always, if this is your first time at the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't want to miss any of the future content that we got going on. But without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about these top 10 players. Now, before we hop into my top 10 players, I do want to offer a list of double check players that you should be looking at your waiver wire, just making sure that these guys are not available, because if they are available, they should be picked up and they should be rostered in your leagues. These players are owned in over 50% of leagues. You got guys like Jerry Judy, Wandell Robinson, Jonathan Brooks, Bo Nix, Quinton Johnston, Geno Smith, Jonu Smith, Jalen Warren, Russell Wilson, Jordan Mason, Matthew Stafford, Taysom Hill, and Christian Watson. We've talked about almost every single one of these guys on previous week's episodes, so they should have been picked up in those previous weeks. If they're still available on your waiver wire, make sure you go add those guys. Now, I want to talk about the first potential add, and this guy is currently rostered in 44% of leagues, so he does kind of meet that under 50% threshold that we like to work with. Anthony Richardson is the name. He is the quarterback that we are going to be picking up this week. Last week was kind of a bounce-back performance from Anthony Richardson. He goes 20 for 30, 272 yards of passing touchdown, but what we like is the 10 carries for 32 rushes rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns as well. It does seem like Anthony Richardson is going to be the starter of the Indianapolis Colts for the remainder of the way this year. And if he is, he is going to be a boom bust quarterback option, but the rushing upside with Anthony Richardson is immense. And so he is a risky type of pickup, but there is a week here where we have Josh Allen, Kirk Cousins, and plenty of other quarterbacks on by. So if you need a quarterback play, Anthony Richardson is available in over 50% of leagues. Now he does play the Detroit Lions, so it is going to be a little bit of a tougher matchup, but you can pick him up and stream him nonetheless. Now let's move on to our next guy. I want to talk about my top wide receiver pickup of the week. It's going to be Adam Thielen. Now, Adam Thielen, he is rostered in only 34% of leagues right now, and that's because he has spent the last few weeks, one, on a bye week there in week 11, but also on IR because he's been dealing with a hamstring injury. Now, Adam Thielen obviously saw the departure of Deontay Johnson, and Adam Thielen was performing a little bit for us even before Deontay Johnson left town. So I think Adam Thielen, he's going to be a safety valve in this offense for Bryce Young. I think he's going to have some value in PPR format, so he's probably probably the top waiver wire pickup for me at the wide receiver position if you need a guy that you can plug in and play right away. I have him in your idiot league mates. I picked him up last week. I'm going to be playing him this week. I had to stash him through the bye, but I think it's a, a guy that you can pick up and play right away. So we'll see what he does this week, but Adam Thielen is my number one pickup. Now moving on to my top running back pickup, I'm going to talk about Roshan Johnson. Roshan Johnson has 10 carries for 33 yards and a touchdown in this last performance against the Green Bay Packers. Now the thing is he is starting to work in a little bit more. It almost feels like it's almost a 60-40 split with DeAndre Swift, and that has been with the new OC change that we saw last week. So that was a first. We're picking up as a speculative ad. We're going to see what happens over the course of the next couple of weeks, but Roshan Johnson is being worked in, and at the very least, this is the time of the year that we want to be picking up handcuffs. We want to be stashing those backup running back options because if there was an injury to the starting running back ahead of them, there's obviously going to be plenty of opportunity on tap, especially for a guy like Roshan Johnson in this Bears offense, where it does also seem like he might have a goal line role as well. So Roshan Roshan is definitely a player that I'm picking up off of the waiver wire right now. Now, going back to another running back we're picking up, it's going to be Gus Edwards. We talked about Gus Edwards last week. He did spell J.K. Dobbins in his previous week's matchup, and now this week he gets six carries for 27 total yards. Not that much of a workload from Gus Edwards. It did seem like it was still J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins had two touchdowns in that matchup versus Cincinnati, but at the end of the day, he's still another one of these running backs that has a percentage of the workload in his backfield, and he is only rostered in about 32% of leagues still, so maybe Make sure you pick up Gus Edwards. He still has that portion of the work and you might be able to flex him in a pinch. But worst case scenario, he is still a handcuff option in one of the league's best offenses that likes to run the football. So let's talk about another wide receiver I like. It's going to be Xavier Leggett of the Carolina Panthers as well. So we had Adam Thielen as a pickup. We also have Xavier Leggett. And the reason why I have Xavier Leggett is because he's rostered in only 48% of leagues. I think that's probably primarily because of the bye week. People couldn't hold Xavier Leggett through the bye week. They had to drop him and now he's dipped below that 50%. So if for whatever reason, he's still available in your league. He's a player that I'm picking up and making sure that I have on my roster. Now in his previous matchup there on November 10th, 
against the New York Giants. He went three for four for 40 yards. He has a lot of boom bust potential in this offense as well. He's the most explosive wide receiver in this offense. He does seem like he has a little bit of an end zone role, a red zone role in this offense, if you say. So I do think Leggett should be picked up. Obviously, it's the Carolina Panthers. And as Adam Thielen is back in the lineup and as Xavier Leggett is in the lineup and Jonathan Brooks comes back and some of these other options are there, there isn't a lot of opportunity to go around because this just quite frankly isn't that good of an offense to support all of these options. But I do think he's definitely still worth a pickup, at least for the meantime. Now, I want to talk about another wide receiver. It's going to be Elijah Moore of the Cleveland Browns. He is rostered in about 19% of leagues. And Jameis Winston is doing Jameis Winston things at the moment. Right now, we've seen multiple guys have big weeks. Jerry Judy's had a big week. We've seen Cedric Tillman have big weeks. Elijah Moore's had big weeks. Coming off of six for eight for 66 yards and a touchdown. I think all of these guys are going to be tough to kind of pin when it's going to be their game, but all of these guys can have games. So if you're looking for a guy just as a depth piece on the roster, somebody that you can plug into your flex on a bye week, Khalil Shakir's on bye this week. There's a couple other guys on bye this week that I think maybe you've been playing them in your flex spot for the majority of the year. Elijah Moore can be plugged and played here this week if you need him to in your fantasy football leagues. Now, we're kind of starting to get into the stash territory. Like I said, this time of the year, you want to be stashing players that have high upside on your bench as you have the roster space. So we do have a couple speculative stashes, if you will. The first one's going to be Trey Benson. Trey Benson has looked really, really good over the last couple of weeks. He's coming off of a 12-touch game where he went for 87 total yards. I think Trey Benson has juice, and we liked him in the pre-draft process when we were looking for Dynasty Fantasy Football Leagues, and we were looking at this rookie class, but Trey Benson, he looks like, one, a premium handcuff in this offense behind James Conner, but also looks like he has a good enough role in this offense right now, and he has enough of that big play ability that he has some flex appeal as well. I mean, Getting 87 yards in a week where you're only getting 12 touches, you can plug that into your lineup in a pinch and be okay with the results. You know, 10.7 PPR points is what he scored. That's fine if you're looking for just a flex play. Now, he is rostered in about 31% of leagues. I think that number should go significantly up because James Conner does have a pretty solid playoff schedule. The Arizona Cardinals have a playoff schedule that is very good. Trey Benson, he benefits from that, obviously, as well. And if there was a James Conner injury, Trey Benson could potentially be a league winner in your fantasy football league. So this is a guy that I don't think should be available on any waiver wire pretty much ever. So we need to make sure that Trey Benson is picked up. If you're a subscriber to this channel, make sure you go grab Trey Benson and put him on the end of your bench in your fantasy football leagues. I promise you, if something ever happens to James Conner, you will not regret that advice. Now let's go on to another guy that I think is a premium handcuff. It's going to be Braylon Allen of the New York Jets. Now they have a pretty good playoff schedule as well. Braylon Allen, unfortunately, ever since we've had the offensive coordinator change, to Todd Downing has kind of been worked out of this offense. Now, obviously, Brees Hall managers are saying, unfortunately, that's not unfortunate. We want Brees Hall to get the majority of the workload. Well, that's true. That being said, though, Braylon Allen, he is the premium handcuff behind Brees Hall. So if there was a Brees Hall injury, Braylon Allen, he would be the beneficiary of that. So I don't really need to talk too much about Braylon Allen. We've seen him be good before this year, earlier in the season. We've seen the kind of efficiency that he has with his touches. We've seen him be used in the receiving game. We've seen him do a lot of these things. All of that considered, Braylon Allen, he is a premium handcuff to Brees Hall. So if you have Brees Hall, make sure you pick up Braylon Allen. If you have the bench space and you need a league winner, potentially if there were an injury to Brees Hall, make sure you pick up Braylon Allen as well. Now I want to go to the tight end position. Let's talk a little bit about Will Disley. Will Disley has been very good over the last couple of weeks and he's coming off of a game here against the Cincinnati Bengals where he went four for six for 80 yards and a touchdown. We have now seen multiple games in a row where Will Disley has been valuable and it does seem like this Greg Roman offense that has historically used tight ends like Mark Andrews over there in Baltimore. Baltimore is using the tight end for Will Disley here in Los Angeles. Now, Justin Herbert, he is throwing the football a little bit more. He is looking good right now. This offense is looking good as a whole. So I do think that Will Disley, if you're looking for a streaming option, obviously we talked about the Bills being on by Dalton Kincaid, Dawson Knox. We talked about the Atlanta Falcons being on by. We're talking about Kyle Pitts there as well. So if you need a pick up and play type of option from the tight end position, Will Disley is probably going to be your guy here this week. He's rostered in about 29% of leagues, so he is widely available. So if you need to pick up this week, make sure you pick up Will Disley because he's coming off of an 18 point PPR performance there last week. Now let's talk about my last play and we're going to talk about another stash at the running back position. And I've talked about this guy for 
many of weeks now, it feels like, so we'll keep it very brief, but it's Blake Corum. Obviously, Blake Corum, he is the premium handcuff to Kyron Williams. They are past the bye week. They have a pretty solid playoff schedule. He's only getting six touches last week. That is only because Kyron Williams is healthy and in the lineup. Kyron Williams is the bell cow in this offense when he is healthy, but if anything happens to the starter in Kyron Williams, Blake Corum would be the next guy up, in my opinion. I think he would get a massive workload from there on out, so Blake Corum, a potential stash that has no value in your starting lineup today, but if there were an injury, Blake Corum is definitely a guy that you can pick up and play. He's rostered in about 21% of leagues. If you're holding him and you need roster space, you need to find somebody to go pick him up, that's fine. You can drop him and you can pick somebody else up, but if you have the luxury of having a roster spot available, Blake Corum should be picked up. Now, I will say too, in my home redraft league, I have Blake Corum on my team. I have Braylon Allen on my team. I have Gus Edwards on my team. I have a lot of these guys on my team. I've been stashing these running backs. Like I said, that is kind of what the end of your bench should look like at this point in the season, so make sure you're stashing those high-end running back stashes. That can potentially be some league winners, so that is going to be the last guy in the video for me today. As always, if you have enjoyed the content, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and make sure you go join our free Discord. I do have a free Discord linked in the description. Happy to talk to you guys in there. There's a community of 250 plus people in there that also want to hang out, talk some fantasy football, help you with some trades, whatever it may be. That being said, though, I have nothing else for you today, so I will see you on our next episode. But until then, peace out.